I'm Dr. Boyd the Chemist and this is Science Made Simple. Today we're going to talk about thermometers, what a thermometer is, what it does, and how to read one. Then we're going to do a brief demonstration to show how it works. Now if you find this video helpful, please go ahead and click that subscribe button for more informative and fun science videos. For today's demonstration, here's what you'll need. For today's demo, you're going to need some hot water. You're going to need some cold water. Of course, you'll need a thermometer. And I have my thermometer in a transparent glass that I'm going to use to hold the hot or the cold water. And then we're going to monitor the temperature as it goes up or down. And take note of the numbers, letters, and lines on my thermometer. Generally speaking, temperature is a measure of hot and cold and a thermometer is a tool used to measure temperature. It is one of several tools that we commonly use to measure changes in the weather. There are several types of thermometers, including digital thermometers that give you an alphanumeric readout. In fact, in one of my earlier videos, I introduced and demonstrated the Galileo thermometer. So after you watch this video, you'll definitely want to go back and check that one out too, because it's pretty cool. Finally, these numbers mean nothing without knowing what units the temperature is being measured in. The most common units for measuring temperature are Fahrenheit, indicated with a capital F, and Celsius, indicated with a capital C. Both F and C are preceded by a small little circle that we call a degree sign. We say the temperature by saying degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Chemists and physicists often use another unit for measuring temperature represented by the letter K, a capital K. It represents Kelvin. Now K is never preceded by the small little circle we call a degree sign, and we never say degrees Kelvin. We simply say the numeric value followed by Kelvin afterward. Because we'll be using hot water in this demonstration, you'll want to be careful not to spill it on yourself or someone else. Now let's see this thermometer in action. For today's demonstration, we are using a thermometer that uses a red liquid to indicate the temperature. The liquid is housed in a clear, sealed, thin tube. At the bottom of the sealed tube, there is a bulb of fluid. This bulb is the temperature sensor. Depending on the hotness or coldness experienced by the bulb, the red fluid rises or falls within the tube. Most importantly, the tube is accompanied by numeric values and lines that we call gradations. The red fluid is calibrated to indicate what the temperature is based on these values. The temperature reading is based on the location where the red fluid is furthest from the bulb at the bottom of the tube. Once we find that spot, we look at the number and gradation closest to the top of the red fluid, and that tells us our temperature. On this thermometer, the gradations fall between values of 10 on the left and values of 20 on the right. Because there are 10 gradation marks between numbers on the left, each gradation on the left represents one degree. Now pay close attention. Because there are still only 10 gradation marks between numbers on the right, but the numbers are multiples of 20, each gradation on the right represents two degrees. First, place your thermometer in a tall glass container. Let's try the cold water first. Before you add the cold water, note the temperature in the room that you're in. Now, add your cold water. Notice how the red fluid goes down within the tube. You'll take your measurement once the red fluid stops moving. Now let's exchange the cold water for hot water. Add your hot water. Notice how the red fluid moves quickly up inside your tube. Once again, we'll take our measurement once the red fluid stops moving. 